For today's video, we are going to look at the Enigma machine, which was used during World War II to keep messages secret. The Enigma machine is a cipher device employed extensively by the German military in the 1930s. The Enigma machine was considered so secure that it was used to encipher the most top secret messages. To understand how the Enigma machine works, let's think about a simple scenario. You want to send a message, OK, to your allies, but do not want the enemy to be able to read it even if they intercept the message. You could encrypt the contents by replacing each letter in the message with another letter, say the letter O is replaced with the letter P, and the letter K is replaced with the letter L. The message becomes an encrypted PL, and your allies could decrypt the message through reversed replacement. You and your allies have to agree upon the way how letters are to be replaced beforehand. The Enigma has an electromechanical rotor mechanism that scrambles the 26 letters of the alphabet. In typical use, one person enters text on the Enigma's keyboard and another person writes down which light in the lamp board illuminated. Each time you press a letter on the keyboard, a letter on the lamp board lights up. If plain text is entered, the illuminated letters are the encoded ciphertext. Entering the ciphertext transforms it back into readable plain text. In German military practice, communications were divided into separate networks. An Enigma operator would be given a plain text message to encrypt. He had to set up the machine first and then type the message on the Enigma keyboard. For each letter pressed, a different letter lamp illuminated according to a scrambled electrical pathways inside the machine. The letter illuminated would be recorded, typically by a second operator, as the ciphertext letter. The action of pressing a key also moves one or more rotors, and changes the electrical connections between the keys and the lights, so that the next key press uses a different electrical pathway. If you press the same key twice, two different letters will light up. For example, pressing the letter A could illuminate the lamp B in one key press, and then illuminate the lamp C in the next key press as the rotor rotates. This process continues until the message is completed. The ciphertext recorded by the second operator would then be transmitted, usually by radio in Morse code, to an operator of another Enigma machine. The operator receiving the encrypted message also needs the Enigma machine to decrypt the message. The operator would type in the ciphertext, the reverse substitution would occur and the plain text message would emerge, as long as all the settings are identical between the enciphering machine and the deciphering machine. The security of the system depends on machine settings that are generally changed daily, based on secret key lists distributed in advance. The receiving station would have to know and use the exact settings employed by the transmitting station to successfully decrypt a message. Let's explain the design of the Enigma machine. Like other rotor machines, the Enigma machine is a combination of mechanical and electrical subsystems. The mechanical subsystem consists of a keyboard, a set of rotating disks called rotors, stepping components to turn rotors, and a series of lamps, one for each letter. An electrical pathway is a route for current to travel. By manipulating this phenomenon the Enigma machine was able to scramble messages. The mechanical parts act by changing electrical circuit. When a key is pressed, one or more rotors rotate on the spindle. On the sides of the rotors are a series of electrical contacts that line up with contacts on the other rotors. When rotors are properly aligned, each key on the keyboard is connected to a unique electrical pathway through the series of contacts and internal wiring. Current, typically from a battery, flows through the pressed key, into the newly configured set of circuits and back out again, ultimately lighting one display lamp, which shows the output letter. The repeated changes of electrical path implement a polyalphabetic substitution cipher that provides Enigma security. Current passes into the set of rotors, into and back out of the reflector, and out through the rotors again. The rotors are the heart of an Enigma machine. Each rotor is a disk about 10 cm in diameter. 26 brass electrical contacts arranged in a circle on each face. The contacts represented the alphabet, the 26 letters A to Z. When the rotors are mounted side by side on the spindle, the contacts of one rotor rest against the contacts of the neighboring rotor. This forms an electrical connection. 
Inside the body of the rotor, 26 wires connect each contact on one side to a contact on the other in a complex pattern. By itself, a rotor performs only a very simple type of encryption, a simple substitution cipher. For example, the contact corresponding to the letter E might be wired to the contact for letter T on the opposite face, and so on. Enigma's security comes from using several rotors in series, usually three or four, and the regular stepping movement of the rotors. This implements a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Each rotor can be set to one of 26 possible starting positions when placed in an Enigma machine. After insertion, a rotor can be turned to the correct position by hand. The position of the ring is known as the ring setting, and that setting is a part of the initial setup before an operation session. Each rotor contains one or more notches that control rotor stepping. Every key press causes one or more rotors to step, before the electrical connections are made. This changes the substitution alphabet used for encryption, and ensures that the cryptographic substitution is different at each new rotor position. This mechanism creates a more formidable polyalphabetic substitution cipher. The right-hand rotor steps once with each key press, and other rotor steps less frequently. The advancement of a rotor is achieved by a ratchet and pawl mechanism. Each rotor has a ratchet with 26 teeth and every time a key is pressed, the set of spring-loaded pawls move forward in unison, trying to engage with a ratchet. The right-hand pawl steps its rotor with every key press. Other pawls are normally prevented from engaging with its ratchet by the ring of the neighboring rotor to the right. As this neighboring rotor rotates, a notch on the ring would eventually align with the pawl, allowing it to engage with the ratchet and advance its rotor. There is a feature called reflector, which is unique to Enigma among the period's various rotor machines. The reflector connects outputs of the last rotor in pairs, redirecting current back through the rotors by a different route. The reflector ensures that Enigma would be self-reciprocal. With two identically configured machines, a message could be encrypted on one and decrypted on the other. The reflector allows a more compact design, but it also gives Enigma the property that no letter ever encrypted to itself. This is a severe cryptological flaw that was then exploited by codebreakers. The plug board is another way for the letters to be switched around. It allows variable wiring that could be reconfigured by the operator. The plug board contributes more cryptographic strength than an extra rotor, as it has 150 trillion possible settings. Enigma without a plug board could be solved relatively straightforwardly, using hand methods, these techniques were generally defeated by the plug board, driving crypt analysts to develop special machines to solve it. A cable placed onto the plug board connects letters in pairs. The effect is to swap those letters. They would use up to 10 of these cables. In use, the Enigma requires a list of daily key settings. Each operator was given a settings list for its Enigma, valid for a period of time. Some of these codebooks were printed in red, water-soluble ink on pink paper so that they could easily be destroyed. A key setting specifies each adjustable configuration. First, we'll order, the choice of rotors and the order in which they should be aligned. Second, ring settings, the position of each alphabet ring. Third, plug connections, the connected pairs of letters in the plug board. And the wiring of the reconfigurable reflector in very late version. The total number of possible configurations has been calculated to be around 3 times 10 to the 114th power. Because of the large number of possibilities, users of Enigma were confident of its security, it was not then feasible for an adversary to even begin to try a brute force attack. My name is Claytab. We create 3D animations on various topics. Go ahead subscribe this channel for lots more animations just like this one.